Howdy, Beefalo Bart here, and welcome. Hopefully this doesn't get tied in with the last one that I did, and hopefully it'll be separate. They're only about ten minutes apart. Um, this is a live stream. I'm on a weird live stream kick, so bear with me. Um, this particular stream is going to be based on the City Studios products, the Polygon versus the Simple, and the Simple that I've got in front of me from them was purchased as part of setting up uh, another feature for our game and the idea of being able to use it was a good thought and we may use some of it but may not be able to use some of it just for various reasons so I wanted to cover the difference between their simple stuff and their polygon stuff I really like the, the polygon stuff um, a lot of really cool things but I wanted to show what the difference is between the simple and the um, the polygon and how to use them and if you want to try to use them together what you're going to end up having to do. So this particular project that I've got running has actually um, the Polygon Christmas, Polygon Adventure, Polygon City, Polygon Dungeons, Polygon Heist, Polygon Knights, Pirates, Samurai, Vikings, all polygon and the only one that I have from simple installed in here is the simple apocalypse interiors so if you want to get that one and see what it looked like or if you want to see it before you buy it um, this is the overview map and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop in here and first we're gonna fly around and then I'll go in play mode and walk around give you a kind of comparison on size wise because the game mode that I'm using is using a polygon character as my my walk around character um, so what you get in the simple apocalypse interiors is a series of like pieces of debris, cans, I love the little mouse trap with a mouse stuck in it. Um, there's a first aid kit, a um, bunch of little things, fire extinguishers to box cutter, candle, I'm assuming that was a screwdriver. The simple stuff is a bit more blocky. Think a slightly advanced version of Minecraft and these are some of the characters that come with this pack you don't get any actual characters to walk around with they're just corpses um, this dude here has had a bad day and so did he and he and he and well this one is titled um, suicide by shotgun really interesting and you have a burnt pile of corpses dude it was stuck in a chair tied up and something impaled into his head and apparently someone decided they were going to try to make soup because you've got a corpse, a little bit of blood, what looks like a can of something, and is that a tomato? <laughs> Not a very good soup. And there's a zombie on the operating table with his chest spread open. And someone burnt on a cross. Not so into that, but okay. Just show them what's in here. You've got a clothesline, some paintings... We already looked at the little miscellaneous stuff. Here's a dollhouse with some many simple guys inside there. Toy box, beds, a sweet race car bed. Points given if you know what that uh, movie reference is. A couple other beds, a broken one with no mattress on it. Hospital bed, turned over hospital bed. Air mattress with pillow. Two air mattresses with pillows on top of crates and junk. Two forklifts. And I'm assuming this was set up so that you can actually make a um, a door out of forklifts that would move something in, in and out of the way. Um, we've got curtain walls. Looks like prison walls with or rafters with a sheet on it. Some shelves, some furniture in pretty ratty shape. Of course, it is an apocalypse interior. A bathtub with some really nasty, nasty green bath water. And a can floating in it, so someone trying to make soup again. Sure, metal detectors, some miscellaneous things, a crib. That's disturbing. A crib with blood in it and broken stuff on it. Oh, let's see. Restaurant interior stuff, a table and chair, or bench and chair. There's your little sewer raft, and I'll show the demonstration map where that's used. So, cool little raft. I got a piano, some counters, pool tables, and cashier counter. But somebody obviously didn't like working this cashier station because they shoved a screwdriver in the screen. Uh, some lockers and shelves and um, primitive cooking stalls and gun shop accessories and shelves and yeah, tent sections and you know, like shantytown tents. 
modular wall sections and not just one but different color versions of some of them including stairwells and other interior pieces um, a hole cut into a floor so you could set it up to where it's on the second floor looking down sewer grates uh, closed and open um, spilling sewage out from pipes um, interior for you know a drain system to get out and you got some debris and roof textures or panels you got floor pieces both normal and soiled um, you've got um, little lane markers so if you have a warehouse and you want to have the lanes you want to mark them out with that that's pretty cool that's floor with holes in it with stains in it and regular and you got your checkerboard floor with or without blood or stains um, yeah quite a few little cool pieces you can put in here These valves and grates and pipes and whatnot um, church interior wall sections uh, you got columns um, these are light shafts that you can place next to like stained glass windows or regular windows to add effects of light coming in even if there's not so that's pretty cool but what is you know with all the stuff that's in here as soon as I hit play since there's no player start this is a Cindy Studios polygon this is from the heist pack the FBI character um, what I've done with this setup here in this particular project is all of the polygon characters are mapped to a single skeleton so that I can actually you know, if I don't want to be him I can go to my player character in the blueprints come in here to my PC master select my viewport my mesh and I can select any of these guys and they're already set up and animated since everything uses one skeleton by doing that it actually comes in quite handy so having all these different ones combined to a single skeleton the only ones that are problematic and they're not totally problematic is the ones from some of the ones from the heist pack because they don't have the back of their head you have to add the hair piece separately so you can kind of vary it around and change it around a little bit um, I'm actually going to be different and I'm gonna be a skeleton so I just pick which one I want compile and save and now I can go back in here and play and I'm the skeleton awesome right so if you want to use any of the simple stuff with the simple stuff it's not a problem but if you want to mix the polygon with the simple stuff the scale of the simple items are a little bit off from there because that's a really really big toilet and I can't even with my jump height set lower down like this I can't even jump onto the toilet that or it's got a bad collision to it and doesn't allow you to get on the toilet seat fixable but if you want to place these items into your maps you're gonna to have to scale them down and I'll show some examples of that here shortly so if you do scale them down that will allow you to um, to use them and they look more appropriate size wise but collision wise they're just simple collisions I like the piano I can use that piano in in other scenes but the scale of everything is just so much larger on the simple items versus the the polygon stuff so that's the big difference and the simple stuff was meant to follow a style of their simple characters and their simple characters look like these guys over here and they are rigged so you can use them but again the size comparison of them you're gonna have to do some scaling to get it to look right to try to match the same vibe so same thing with the building pieces there's some some that have collisions some that don't the floor pieces do thankfully um, like these these are good if you're trying to build an underground sewer you got the green slimy water and you got a bunch of different pieces here that you can actually use to make the sewer trace out the way you want it to so that's cool your wall interior pieces they're a little bit on the the big side and let's actually go into a a new map I'm gonna create one I'm gonna call new level default and I'm actually going to 
do my usual, get rid of those couple of things, create a landscape, and we're gonna, just going to set it to one by one, create, go back, the landscape, go to details, set the height to zero, and we're going to set our game mode override to third person game mode. So now we can hit play and we can walk around the map. Cool, right? Um, and I'm actually going to move my character back just a hair so that I can build things on the zero, zero, zero and show you what we do. And again, I'm just going to go ahead and do a quick lighting build so we're all set up. All right, so lighting is complete. Now we can actually get in here and build stuff. Now, a typical piece from the polygon, and I'm going to grab the polygon city asset pack here, and mesh folder and environment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab grass, and I'm going to go ahead and set that to zero zero zero. And I'm going to grab a road piece and I'm going to set it to zero, zero, and one because I want it to stick up just a hair. Now, what you're going to notice is they're both the same size. Whenever I put it at zero, 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 one covers the other. So you can actually know that your size of these are going to be 500 by 500 that makes designing your maps and laying them out a whole lot easier whenever everything is set to a uniform grid so again if I do 0 and 0 and 0 this piece right here we know is it's double in length so it's actually we're gonna go ahead and set the height up to 1 so now if we look at it this is a 500 by 500 tile, this is 500 by 500, this is 500 by 1000, and it makes placing these items so much easier so that you can build a uniform grid on your map. And if you're trying to design your map ahead of time, you can get a simple tablet of graph paper and plot things out and draw it in, in here knowing what you've got to work with. You know that you've got a grass panel and you've got um, a path section that you can drop in and you can keep the same uniform grid of 500 by 500 just use one square of your graph paper for each individual tile so if I wanted to I could do this grab this in here and they'll lock together nicely and whatever if I want to grab this one again control C control V and I want to rotate it 90 degrees and now I could slide it back over and lock it right back in place and who knows I can grab it again and I can rotate it one more time and kind of pointless little loop there but you know what it's just to show the fact that they're 500 by 500 and it's easy to place these tiles down so now I'm going to compare a 500 by 500 tile from the polygon city and we're going to go into the simple apocalypse and go to the environment tab and we're going to grab the floor blank. Now we're going to set this to 10 on height so it's not at zero and level of the floor. That one is 500 by 500. Great, that's awesome. Um, you can, once you mouse over the item that you're looking at, you can see the dimensions approximate size 500 by 500 by zero. Um, like um, floor warped. I can put this in here and again I'm gonna put the height at 10 but it's also 500 by 500 and that's great. But let's look at some of the wall sections. Security entrance. Okay well first off let's go ahead and rotate it so it's facing the right direction. So we're at 90 degrees there it's actually 1000 wide so again not that bad of a, a situation here so we can butt it up right next to those tiles and we'll bring its height up so it matches to the floor 
But if we look at it, the door is way too tall and it's too wide and the dimensions are off. So if we actually grab this item and we scale it down by 0.5 by 0.5 by 0.5 it's not going to be 500 wide but the door size is not bad. We can actually use it if we scale it in half and then we can actually go ahead and plop it down on the ground and size it up to our grid of 500 by 500 and now it makes it more usable. So you can do that with those wall sections that works out pretty good then we'll take a look at some of the props and items that go along with it also. Um, just want to grab a couple wall pieces in here as examples. The next example would be probably the stairwell. And yes, it's going to bug me that this is not butted up against there correctly. I am just that OCD. <laughs> so, um, where is the actual stairwell? A lot of pieces in here. It's pretty cool. Um, so you can use them if you scale them correctly. So that's a good thing. Where is my... There we go. There's a blue one. We use the green to match up with the other green we already have. So again, if we bring it out here, it's awesome that it's 500 by 500. But if we go in here to play, good God Almighty, that is huge. Um, we can walk up and down. It's no problem. But the stair height, the collision is actually an angle. So it's functional, but it doesn't look right. But if you look at the stair height, that's like 40 high or almost 50 high on the stair height. So it's a little bit much. So if we tried to scale this one down to half from 1, 1, 1. We're going to do 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0.5 so that we get it scaled correctly. So now this looks a little bit more appropriate. And we look at it from the inside. We're not really going to hit our head as we go down. It's scaled appropriately for our character, but it's now half the width. So that's something we're going to have to take into account if we're adding stuff into our map here that um, we're going to have to account for items like the stairwell is going to be not 500 by 500 but it's going to be 250 by 500 it's half width again like if we bring in this doorway and rotate that around and now we try to position this well the 500 by 500 looks okay with the tile but again if we look that doorway is huge so if we ended up doing the 0.5 to make it look right and let's just slide it over to match with our stairwell there and let's take a look at it so now we can actually size it up correctly with our stairwell but we can't walk underneath the damn door so what gives well a the collision might be wrong so let's move it up a little bit too so we come in here to the map and try to walk through our doorway we can't go through our door because the collisions wrong and well the size just doesn't match up correctly um, and if we tried to do the Z value of 0.7 to make the door taller it just doesn't look right. We'd have to match the walls to that as well. So you could try setting it to maybe 0 0.55. So that's where you're going to run into problems. If you're trying to match up the thing, see, now I can't get up the stairs because the collision. So that's going to be problematic. So you may not be able to use the wall pieces and if you're going to use the stairs you're going to have to match them up the best that you can so let's look at props now go to the items if you want to use um, what's a good size wise 
We'll throw a fire extinguisher in here. We'll throw a canteen, which always comes in handy for survival games. A bottle of beer. And... I don't know, let's throw in a can, an open can. So now if you compare the size of those compared to what your polygon character is going to be, or your polygon character versus your, your simple, again, you're going to have to resize those items. So if I control C, control V, make another copy of it and size it down to 0.5 by 0.5 by 0.5, and we'll do the same thing, control C, control V, and we'll size that one down. 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, Arcan, Control C, Control V, change its size, and our fire extinguisher, Control C, Control V, 0.5 by 0.5 by 0.5, not 2.5, 5. Now we go in here and we'll take a look at it. The beer bottle is a little bit closer to the correct size. The can's about right. Canteen, fire extinguisher, everything looks good if you scale it down in half. They don't look so chunky either whenever you, you scale them down. So, not bad. And let's take a look at that um, the other items. I'm go ahead and dump these out of the way. We don't need those. We're going to dump that, dump that, dump that, dump that. We're going to keep our 500 by 500 as a visual reference. So let's look at our props. Cage hallway. That I'm sure can come in handy for um, putting into a map. We'll look at its scale. Um, we're going to grab a sweet race car bed. We're going to grab the bar counter. Uh, let's see what else can we throw in here. Ceiling fan. I didn't have that whenever I made my custom ceiling fans before. Um, I'll show you a quick trick to actually make the ceiling fan turn. Um, we got to have the toilet. Oh, I didn't notice that before. A fish tank. Let's throw that in there. Um, there's a generator, bunk beds. Let's grab the gun wall or the gun rack. The piano, that's something that I would probably use in other maps. Grab our sewer boat. Go ahead and scale that up or move it up. And well, let's grab our toilet. And the last item I'm going to throw in here is going to be one of the prop shops. So we'll take a look at them. And, well, if you're trying to be the vendor here of this, this stall, you ain't going to do a whole lot of business because you really can't see over the counter. And if you're the customer, then, um, well, that's a side of a skeleton I've never seen before. <laughs> And I don't know about playing this piano or going to this bar. I feel like I'm an eight-year-old trying to go to the bar. And sweet race car bed. Ceiling fan blades. And we can scale that down to the fish tank. I don't know. I'd probably leave that boat the way it is. But there's our toilet. First off, let's look at our collision. Let's look at our simple collision. That's probably why we cannot get onto it is because it has a big tapered collision on it. If we really wanted to be cool and sit on our commode, we could always change our compl ugh, collision complexity to use complex as simple. And then we go in here to play. We can now jump on our toilet and fall into the bowl a little bit. Because that's always what I wanted to do was fall into a toilet bowl. So size-wise, we'll try that one at 0.5. Now I think it's actually too small, but you can play with the size. I would say probably 0.6 or 0.7. We'll do 0.65 by 0.65 by 0.65. To me, that looks a little bit tall, but better. 
So you can scale them around, get them to, to match up size-wise. Those fish don't look too healthy in the fish tank. With the market stalls, I would say probably 0.5 on those. The piano. And we'll try this at the same thing. 0.5 by 0.5 by 0.5. So, till it's right. Piano is a little bit better. It's a little small, but yeah, usable. I would say this is a little bit too small. I would try 0.7 on the edge. And the bar is too small. So, you're, you're going to have to juggle them around a little bit to get the size just right on them. But, let's go ahead and I'm going to dump everything out that I already put in here. I'm going to do my other usual, create a new folder called map shit. And I'm going to grab all these, all this shit and put it in there. Okay, the ceiling flan. The ceiling flan. Yeah, let's use a ceiling flan. Um, where was the ceiling fan blades? Right there. So if you want to make a working ceiling fan, and we can do it two ways, with or without a light. Let's start off with the ceiling fan itself. And what I would do is I would go over to our assets, blueprints, and right click, make a new blueprint class, actor, ceiling fan, blade, open it up. Draggy ass over here. Go back to our. Let me close the Polygon City. Our props, wasn't it? Ceiling flam blade. I'm going to select it here. Go back into this. Add a component. And there's our, our mesh. I'm going to scale it down to 0.6 by 0.6 by 0.6. So it's a little bit more appropriate size-wise. And then we're going to add another component, which is going to be a rotating moment movement. And we're going to compile and save. And now we're going to go ahead and go back to our Blueprint folder, grab our Blueprint for that. We're going to drop it into the map. Just going to move it up a little bit so we can see it. And there, we got a moving ceiling fan. And what can you use that for? Well. You can, like, stand on it and get dizzy as hell. But if you want to make a working ceiling fan, you can do that. If you want to change the speed, get a rotating movement. Come over here. We're going to change our 180. And let's try it at 500. Let's jack that puppy up. Compile and save. And let's see what happens when we turn it up to 500. A lot faster. And just the same, if you want to slow it down really, really, really slow, you can go back in here and we'll do it at 10. What the heck? Let's give it a shot. Now, those are your areas where you can change the way that it rotates. So it's rotating, but it's rotating really slow. So that's how you set your speed on it. Um, what can that be useful for? Well, let's take a look at the polygon dungeons and let's go to our mesh folder and one thing in particular that I was looking for there's a couple traps that are in here that you can use now this is awesome here you can actually set up a, um, a cog wheel make it turn uh, that's really cool so if you're trying to make something to look awesome you can grab um, the wheels and you can change the size of them and where they all mesh together and you can make them turn their own direction get really complex and that's that's cool you can do that um, you've got these trap rails you can set that in here and you can set your saw blade in and you can just have it there as a visual props where you can look at it it's nice it's cool it's awesome but it, let's make it spin so let's go ahead and delete that and we'll leave the track there just for the heck of it 
we're going to come back over here to our and we're on our props folder our blueprints and blueprint actor spinning blade open that up and we don't need our ceiling fan up anymore we're going to go back into what is a props and find our spinny blade thing and there's two of them there's one with big teeth and one with the, the finer teeth doesn't matter I'm just gonna grab this one add component static mesh add component rotating movement now what we need to take into effect is our rotating movement is still set on the z-axis so let's compile and save and see what our blade looks like when we go ahead and drop that into the map so we want our saw blade to sit right here on the track and let's actually move over to this side I've actually set up <coughs> a timeline system where we bring the saw blade up move over to here go down be hidden underground come back over to here and just run a continuous loop cycling back and forth or you can have it pop up come over here pop down pop up go over here and you can set it up however you want to but let's go ahead and see what this looks like well it's not turning in the right direction cool but not the right direction so we take a look at our rotating movement we clear out that one and let's try it on our y-axis We'll try 150 on the y-axis. And that's the wrong one. I knew it was, but I just wanted to showcase it. Sure, that has its own uses too, but we know that that is the wrong one, and we want to use the x rotation, a rotation rate x of 150, and we'll clear out our y and our z and there we go that should take care of it now we have a spinning blade so that's cool you can actually make your your spinning blade make it work um, you can make it go back and forth and that kind of stuff now there was also some items in here that were interesting i'm going to go ahead and create a new blueprint class actor um, pinned axe and we're going to go ahead and open that up we're going to close our spinning blade and in here there were some pendulum axes that hang from the ceiling right here and big blades that hang down but you'd want the pivot for your rotation to be right there so let's see what it takes to do that. Add a component, our trap swinging blade. So now, if you look, this is in the center right here. So that may be a good thing. So let's add a component, rotating movement, and let's try it at 100. Now the trouble is, is it's just going to do a complete circle and let's go ahead and drag that in here now it's gonna put it into the ground which that's fine we're gonna drag it up and I'm just gonna rotate it so we can see it from the side so yeah that's um cool on its own right but uh... yeah it's gonna take some experimenting to get it just right well first off we see our rotating movement is there but we forgot to take out our Z so let's clear that out and by we I mean me so that's wrong so we want to go back and forth this way so there's two ways we can go about this um, well we can try to figure it out this way but I would say it's just as easy to go ahead and take our axe and let's go ahead and rotate that 90 degrees 
compile and save and then we can take our rotation that we already have on it and let's take that put it back to zero and what happens there we go it's pivoting around the correct point but it's going in a full circle um, there is ways you can actually play around with this I would actually create the to keep it simple I would set it up to where it actually um, it's not going to cause any damage right now but I would set it up to where what it does is it disappears into the ceiling and keeps doing its full rotation instead of a pendulum effect if you wanted a pendulum effect and you just had to have it that way then I would assume you'd want to try to do it as a timeline so and if you wanted to damage the player or if you wanted the saw blade to damage the player or if you wanted to set up this ceiling fan system to chop up a player then you would have to add in collision boxes and so forth and the effects of doing damage whenever the, they collide so that will at least get you going on getting them cosmetically working and again like I said if you wanted to create some damage to it the uh, spinning blade you look at the viewport you could add a component in as a collision box you could do a I don't know it's kind of a tough one to, to choose here if you did a spherical collision you'd want to size it up and it is for some reason I, I run into this problem that it doesn't want to scale up correctly let's go ahead and dump it off of there let's actually put it on the root and we're doing that and we want to make it bigger so if we did five in the z-axis it's actually not moving its size there so if you just put it onto the blade and tried it that's still not working so I'd say probably go ahead and just do a, a box not a Bix but a yeah typing and make the box appropriate if someone's actually standing on the blade that close they need to be chopped up anyway so I would say make it uniform four by four and then the width of it I would say probably go with um, 0.3 that way you got a thinner curve on it so you actually can trigger that to actually do damage so if the player actually walks into it then it's going to cause damage to them so being this close to it you're going to take damage so do it that way alrighty that's enough show and tell on those and that was uh, the whole primary point of this video was to showcase the fact that um, you actually have um, a difference between the the simple stuff and the polygon stuff I'm a fan of the polygon stuff but if you want to use the simple stick with all simple assets if you try mixing them together you said you're going to run into the issue of um, um, trying to size up everything correctly and when you mix the two together um, you just have to experiment with it see what's what most of the floor tiles work out pretty good because they're 500 by 500 but it's when you start looking into the wall sections where you really have to take that into consideration and start looking at the sizing things like a door frame because when you try to resize that it's just not going to look right so you take that and you're going to have to size it down to 0.5 by 0.5 by 0.5 so that you get the right size door frame and when you do that it doesn't allow you to walk through so to fix that issue you can actually go in here change your collision complexity use complex collision as simple and just run it that way 
that should open it up enough to where you can now walk through it but you're still going to have problems because with your character the thing you've always got to take into account on your characters when you're you're creating custom things like this look at the the height above the character for that that box there that is your capsule that's going to affect your collision and being that it's a foot above my head that's going to affect that and I can't just grab a hold of my character and slide them up and down if we look at our capsule component we can resize it but if we we go from 96 to 90 we'll say it makes it smaller but it's gonna not see our feet so by doing that if I go in here to play now my feet are gonna stick through the ground because the capsules actually on the ground it's not taking into account the actual player itself so what if we just raise our character up let's compile and save and now look at it our character's feet are on the ground again so we can actually be careful with it and manually slide it your feet are actually above the ground and you can fit through the doorway so with that you really need to look it's kinda of hard to judge and the best way that I found to do it was to actually take it and if you don't have multiple monitors like I do then I would say make it small on your screen to where you can actually see what you're doing here and then kinda of zoom in get your transform tool so that you can actually click on your mesh there and if you want to see for sure you can go ahead and grab another copy of your your character throw it into the um, the scene Oh, I forgot where we had set up to change our animations and look at it this way zoom in yeah that's what I was showing to, to raise the mesh up and down but want to make sure that we get our feet at just the right height so if you need to make your adjustments you can do this and make your adjustments back and forth now to match with what it's looking like so you can undo your snapping and, and manually slide it also I'm gonna go ahead and compile and save I'm gonna drag, drag you right back up there and now we've got our collision set a little bit better but we're still hovering above the ground so you really only want to affect it a little bit at a time I'd rather it be just a hair above I'll zero you back out we're at negative 87 so if we wanted to like negative 86.5 or just play with it actually that's wrong I went the wrong wrong direction there but just play around with it get it to where it suits you fine I'm okay with it right there for now I would actually no I'm not okay with it I would definitely have to fix that just because I have way too many OCDs I'll try to negative 88 yeah I, I just have so many OCDs that everything has to be and it's not a bad thing that's better one foot is above the ground the other one isn't but it looks good damn you ugly but it allows you to get through these door frames once you've resized them because you have changed the collision on the door frame change the scale of the door frame and then fix your character so you have the correct collision box so you too ugly get off my screen and again with the PC master running it this way and having all of those characters mapped to a single skeleton I now have a pretty diverse list of things that I can use I want to be the um, businesswoman or I can be um, English governor or I can be oh I don't know I want to be a female pirate let's be a female pirate just that easy by having everything mapped correctly you can go ahead and change your appearance of your character awesomeness all right um, 
I like that skeleton for some reason. I like a good winch every now and then too. Don't get me wrong, but you know, <clears throat> but um, the gentleman, or we can be a ghost. How about that? Ghost two. Let's be ghost one. So I like having all these assets. You know, just screw around with stuff. You can suit it to fit your map. See the the way the character looks. You can't see his feet, so it almost looks like he's hovering across the ground. And it has a weird effect as you look around it. It's a ghost. It's supposed to be weird, right? Um, another one that I like is actually called the Tormentor. Um, Tormented Soul. So it has kind of a Grim Reaper feel to it with the um, the skeleton arms and the, the cloak and no legs. So it's hovering across the ground, so to speak. Well, yeah, the, the motion blur is kind of a good and a bad thing. If you want to freak people out, it looks cool and freaky. If you don't, you can turn on, turn that off. But I like this one. Even though there are legs and it's still walking around and it moves like it has legs, it's um, still kind of cool because whenever it stops, it's like hovering above the ground and it's kind of a good spooky feel to it. But with having all those asset packs and... In, what I do to set it up whenever I go to a specific map like I did in my example from before um, I set up the game mode to automatically here we could be a muscle car how about that um, I didn't need to actually do a video on setting up these cars um, yes yes I know I gotta go back to our unarmed animation so, you can actually use the cars from the Polygon City. I have not figured out the correct way to fix the cars from the Polygon um, Heist Pack. The rigging is a little bit different. It can be a fish. How about that? Or we can be a shark. Sharks are awesome. Um, it doesn't have an animation class, but it has a an animation so technically speaking if we want to be that shark of course our capsule is all kind of screwed up um, we're not going to edit it right now but it, there is an animation that goes with the shark and I think that's pretty cool um, the one thing you have to do pay attention to as you're changing these around um, make sure it's changing the material correctly I had a problem the other day where it did not do that that one's kind of cool. We'll use that one. And it didn't apply the correct texture whenever I changed it. So what was happening is it was using the... Um, yeah, I'm not a fan of motion blur. Um, it was applying the city texture to the, the other character. So it had kind of a weird, ghoulish, greenish effect. So the... The shark is actually in the Polygon Pirates Pack. I would buy. I would have bought this Pirates Pack just for the damn shark because he's awesome. In the creatures folder, you have a fish and you have a shark, so you can open up the shark animation. Yeah, auto, auto exposure. So you have that basic animation, and what I did was I created a uh, shark tank that had sharks in it floating around, swimming around, that kind of stuff. So if you wanted to actually be the um, the shark, oh screw you, save all. I didn't change anything. No, we're not worried about that either. I'm not saving this damn map. Let's go to our player blueprints. Right click. Create child actor blueprint, shark, open it up, and hopefully this won't be too screwy to work with. We should be able to edit that. So let's look at our mesh, change it to shark, and we're going to have to move it up. I'm going to try this without messing with the capsule just for the giggles of it, and for animation class, Select animation mode to use animation asset. Click
click on here and I hate when it does that um, and yes I can select it from there that would be lovely but I didn't want it I wanted this to come up so there we have an animation bang and bang so let's try to go to our world settings leave our third person game mode but let's go to shark and play <laughs> so now we can play a shark and just roam around and be be awesome but our right click remember took us into our combat mode so that, that kind of screws our shark up quite a bit so we, we can't use the same I would actually have to go in here and just create a duplicate of this one and get rid of my combat mode my crouching um, and get rid of, make sure that I don't have jump in there as well the only movement that I'd want is my mouse input and my movement input so let's actually try it that way so we'll dump you force delete we will right click on you create a duplicate call you sharky go in and we want to get rid of combat mode and crouch and we want to get rid of our jumping because we don't want to jump and let's just try it with that we'll go to our viewport compile save mesh shark go ahead and move our mesh up and we could actually create a full you know a better mesh for the capsule I am totally not worried about it use animation asset and there we go compile and save default pawn is sharky and now we can run around as a shark sharks have a hard time usually getting through door frames but since he's using the same capsule as the, uh, the regular character he can fit lovely through a door frame there's no jump there's no right click to or left click um, I just think it's kind of stupid but fun to run around as a shark. I would probably also go in here and go to the viewport, go to the follow camera. Let's bring it back a little bit and let's bring it up just a little bit. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Now we can pan around and look, get a good shot of them teeth. I'm sure you could find a use for playing a shark like this. This is, I'm just amusing myself at this point. And if you can't amuse yourself, then what's the point of it, right? Just the same thing. You could also be the fish. Gotta get rid of that door frame. It's killing me. So imagine you could create a game where you got players versus sharks or fish versus sharks or whatever, you know. Let players take control of the the sharks. And if you wanted to actually make this a little bit more where you could actually do damage with the shark, even though the mouth doesn't work, it doesn't animate, that kind of stuff, um, you could always just set up a box collision or capsule collision or whatever in front of it. So essentially whenever you left mouse button it simulates you just attacked something or bit something so that would be kind of cool um, if you want to create these as roaming characters that's also pretty cool you can set it up to where you have sharks roaming around the 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 ocean floor uh, this is a very very simple a very very stupid method of doing it I'm actually going to go back to my player but, um, cars, I haven't done the, uh, the cars in quite a while, so I'll look at it quickly, but I'm probably not going to be able to set it up. So this is, for giggles, we'll add new, um, features or content pack and vehicle. 
add to project and then close that back out so now it added the uh, the blueprint in for the, your game modes and your map and your sedan so if you were to actually go to the example map for that one uh, yes whatever save selected kiss my butt waste map sounds good so now in this vehicle game mode is already set up and everything so if you hit play you can just come in here and drive around there's no sound it's a little bit on a weird side the the driving mechanics are less than optimal so they need a lot of tweaking to get it to, to work correctly and, and and nicely I mean even the drift I mean but you do have a gear indicator and speed indicator that's kind of cool um, you can hit tab and go to an interior view but the mouse is inverted for some reason and that kind of annoys me but you have the shifter the shift in it, or gear indicator on the dashboard and the speed it's really hard to control because your mouse is not looking in close to the right direction and it's backwards on the up and down but if you want to set up the um, the blueprint for the sedan and if you look at it you've got all the the fancy cool stuff is lovely and if you look at your viewport I want to close out some of these extra damn things here alright so if you look at your viewport you want to change out to one of the cars from the Cinti Studio stuff let's look at the Polygon City and meshes and vehicles rigged and we want to be a we want to be the Camaro where's the Camaro right there the muscle car so I'm gonna select that go back into here and now we see the mesh for our vehicle we grab our mesh inherited we're gonna go over here and let's go ahead and use the arrow and change it out to the Camaro now I wish it was just that simple that that's all we had to do was just change the mesh and then hit compile and save and now we can go drive a Camaro and that would be awesome but what happens is you look it's wobbling all over the ground we can't really go anywhere it's the driving mechanics is all screwed up because we have to change a few things um, number one let's go to our vehicle movement and what's happening is they don't make it easy to just quickly see so you haven't changed the wheels let's see if I can find it this way yep right there vehicle setup wheel setup so we see that the wheel class is sedan front wheel and the bone name is wheel front left but if we look at the actual car the muscle car skeleton our wheel right left or right RL RR FL and FR so we need to make these match with these so your bone name is no longer wheel front left we need to wheel FL would seem that it's front left so let's go ahead and change this to say wheel FL is it capitalized nope both lowercase so we'll come in here to the bone name and we're going to change that to FL and we'll change this one to wheel underscore front right and it should be RL and RR yep so here we'll change this one to R L and this one to R R and they were lowercase and let's see what that did compile and save now we go in here hit play cars not flopping around like a fish and we can drive so that was the big thing to do whenever you're trying to get this car to work because the bone names are were named differently for the wheels 
but let's see what happens when we hit tab okay we can see inside we can see the interior of the car that's good can't see where the hell we're driving though because the camera is weird um, get space bar to, to power brake but kind of cool we'd have to change the location for the um, the widget that's being displayed on the inside for the speed and for the, the gear selection but it's not bad overall we can actually jump in and drive the car um, and just the same as if we go in here and we don't want to use the Camaro anymore we want to actually say let's be the the taxi cab so really quickly I want to look in here make sure that these are the same lovely so now I can come in here and I have the taxi skeletal mesh selected select my mesh oh um why are you what oh never mind never mind I'm having old age problems now it can be a taxi cab compile and save because the bone names and the, the locations are already in the right locations so now we can actually drive the taxi cab and that's, that's all we have to do from this point on is I want to be the ambulance grab the skeletal mesh come over here select mesh at the arrow and now I am an ambulance and now I could drive around the map as an ambulance and this is just a vehicle game mode and the default pawn class and everything else is to set it up now unfortunately the wheels are not turning that's something else you have to look into and I'm not gonna mess with right now but if we look at it from the side we can tell that it the oh there is no interior for this one. Oh, we can look at the back well that's not good no bueno for the interior view this we're just trying to back up but yeah we'll have to fix the uh, the camera location on that if we were to be the ambulance um, but what's happening is you're you're not your tires are not spinning not a big deal but if I wanted to use any other thing besides the ones from the city if I wanted to use the ones from polygon heist I want to drive them cars go to meshes go to vehicles I want to drive the bank truck or the SWAT truck or I want to drive the um, the heist police car it's a better looking police car it's off the Dodge Charger look um, the problem that I run into with this one is these are named the same thing front right or F R R R R L F L those are the same but we saw this worked for all the city vehicles it worked just fine click on the mesh and now I click on that mesh and hit that it changed the mesh just fine we can see it, it looks lovely hit compile we hit save go into the map to drive our, our new fancy police car and what the hell are you doing well we can move forward but um, and as soon as we hit to turn or whatever else it is like all kind of goofed up so um, what's our problem here uh, if we look at our mesh uh, well we changed the mesh the mesh looks good well, that's not the problem so if you look at your vehicle movement this is where you're gonna have to start playing around with things and figuring it out um, you could set it up to be the the helicopter but that's what I'm thinking was the physics asset and you look at the um, the FR the the physics for the wheel is I think where we're running into issues even though they look like they're in the same position if we compare this to um, so you look at this is the um, the Camaro car from the city pack and that's the police car why they included the antenna and in, in that <laughs> mesh for for that or whatever but um, there is some difference in it 
So, um, spherical collision. That's using a full sphere for the collision for for that. Um, yeah, I never spent a whole lot of time working on trying to get these two vehicles to work out of all of the ones that were in there. But I'm sure that it has something to do with with that. Trying to figure out the uh, the physics on it. I actually didn't know that it was because I was watching somebody else was doing this and setting up these cars and he was able to get the other ones to work but he never did get these working in his video so I wasn't the only one that was having this issue um, like front right look at the constraints front right constraint yeah that would be something to fiddle around with I have not like I said spent a whole lot of time on these to try to get the heist vehicles to drive we've already established that the rotor blades are not in the correct position to be rotatable I'm sure you could rip it apart and make it work but not from inside Unreal Engine So we know the naming is correct on the bones. It's just, there's just something you gotta have to fiddle around with on the um, the actual um, physics asset, I believe. No, I haven't actually, and the reason why I haven't is, again, it boils down to I have a working police car here, um, ambulance couple miscellaneous sedans, a muscle car, a van. I had enough vehicles here in the city pack to where um, two drivable vehicles from this pack it wasn't really enough for me to spend my time on it to get the SWAT van to be drivable and this police car to be drivable. It wasn't worth the, the time and effort for me to put into it to make two vehicles work because we never really set up a driving game which I would like to, to look into doing more driving related stuff as part of my other project. Well, this is a disposable project, so it's not like it's going to hurt anything. Uh, do, 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 vehicles, yep. Um, Create new physics assets without assigning it to the selected mesh. Well, let's try um, create new physics asset and assign it to each of the selected meshes. You can try it that way, or um, yeah, that's that should be fine to make it that way. Yeah, um, primitive type sphere because it was using sphere before. Um, auto orient to bone. Hmm. Constraint creation. Yeah, well, definitely be something to to screw around with. But let's just see what happens. Yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> yeah, I, I can see that being... Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's hard to set to that car. Yeah. That, I, I'm pretty sure that this is not going to be optimal at this point. Because our license plate is completely separated from the rest of the car. <laughs> so I'm trying to drive it and yeah it's just a bit less than optimal yeah it totally worked just not correctly so let's um, 
uh, that was the new one we just created. It named it pretty much the same damn thing. Oh, excuse me. I am still on Pi. Delete you. And... Let's look at that. We don't have the physics asset assigned to it. So that's the original one. All right, save all. Yeah, and that's what it leads me to believe. Even though we fixed the issue with it um, detecting the tires being in the wrong spot, you know, or being named incorrectly, rather. Um, so that was that was fine. The one thing that I haven't tried doing is remapping it and trying to, to think of it as a character and assign a new skeleton to it. Because we know that um, they they have their own skeleton. If you look at the skeleton itself, it's just showing the car, but front right, front left, all of the same things are there. The steering wheel. Um, all of the pieces are there. And that's that's an option as well. Um, um, no, a skeleton. Um, Well, again, like I said, I was going to try remapping it to the skeleton of the other police car. Because they're, they're both police cars, and they're both cars. They both have tires. and um, Physics. Enable per-poly collisions. physics asset don't want the businessman shirt um, let's try police no that's the actual characters Vehicle, police car, that is in the city one. Well, it's not bouncing around anywhere, but um, yeah, it's just not moving. So let me try that and put it back to the original one and then it starts bouncing around so by changing it back and forth there you can see what happens when I put it back to the original um, physics asset is it starts to want to, to rise up eek whereas um, and actually if I can actually oh stop clicking on shit eat a dick um, if I grab the mesh and just throw it into the map same thing with that guy And see how it's rocking back and forth go back into the assets and if I were to change it back around if I change it to the other one it doesn't jump around but it just doesn't work it doesn't move so the thought was to try changing skeletons and to try it off of the other police car skeleton so by looking at it like that um, the glass the plates and something else are missing target bone it's not going to affect it because I mean, 
if I were to add this in there, it's still going to work. There's no steering wheel on the heist one. That could be part of an issue. Um, but it says there's a steering wheel right there. The other cars had a steering wheel. It's steering W. So what did the original vehicle? No. Why would it? Why would? Why would there be a mesh inside the frickin' meshes folder? That's a good place to put your materials. Is the mesh folder? Idiot. There's materials. There's textures. What the hell's the damn skeletal mesh for the? Oh, there it is. It's in the root. It's not in in the uh, the regular mesh folder. So there is no steering wheel there. But there's a damn steering wheel right there. Hmm. But there is no bone for the skeleton for the um steering wheel. Whereas both of the police cars have a steering wheel. They're named completely different. But again, just for the hell of it, let's try doing the um not weapons vehicles let's reassign the skeleton to car police new Yeah, whatever, I don't care. Um, again, this is one of these things where it's a test project. Screwing around with it is not going to hurt anything. And that totally didn't do much. But it's not flying in the air anymore. Just the, well, the nose is. So yeah, the amount of time that it's taken for me to... Um, to screw around with this, uh, it just is not worth my time um, to actually work with it and spend much time with it. So that's why, like I was saying before, I, I value my time based on uh, this so unorganized crap. Um, the time versus end result. For me to spend the amount of time trying to make two cars work um, is just really not worth the effort for me. Um, put this back to the police car, viewport, mesh. There. Compile and save. Time versus end result. When I can just do this and have an operational police car. And I can drive around. And the time that I could... I can spend on this I could actually be doing the um, the tires making the tires spin because as I'm turning my car around here I see that my tires are not turning so I could have actually made my tires work in the time that I've spent trying to make two cars work and then if I can get the tires to spin that should work globally around all of them so that's that setting up things to work still a fan of these polygon stuff so one of them I have not shown in any of the other videos was the Christmas around Christmas time um, City Studios provided this um, small asset pack for free on their website it wasn't anywhere else it was only on the website and if you wanted it you had to actually go there so kind of cool if you're 
set up a Christmas scene. It's nice to have everything already set up and ready to rock and roll. Here's some Christmas pudding. Here's some presents you can throw under the tree. Although it would have been nice if they were off the zero axis. Axis. So when you drop them in, they automatically went to, to ground level. But, you know, if you're trying to decorate for Christmas and make a Christmas scene, then there you go. You've already got packages you can set up. If you want to make your own custom variation of the packages, you can take um, a box top and you can either put the blue top back on or you can actually say, okay, whatever, screw it. I want to put a red one on and I want to put on a yellow ribbon. So when you put the ribbon in, it's supposed to wrap around and I'm totally not even taking my time here to, to make everything line up. Um, so you could set it up to where it actually looks right I'm not taking the time right now I'm just being a, a butt so you can line it up so you can make a blue box with a red lid with a yellow ribbon and then you want to put a green bow on top there you go you can make your own custom packages there are some other materials that are in here um, the striped box in the materials if you want to set it up a little bit differently uh, you've got um, two different other colors of, of that and two different other colors of the, the, the box with the faces on it so if you set up the um, this box it has a little polygon characters faces on it or if you want to set up the striped box can actually change them. You have some options there. Go to your details, your Christmas presents, your material, and change your stripe pattern. So entirely up to you to screw around with that. Um, I said the same thing with these guys with the um, the face ones. Um, You have some other color variations of it. But I had that one set up to the blue. So, yep, there you go. So, that was the Polygon Christmas. We gotta have Santa some cookies and milk. I was saddened to find out that, you know, this is cool. You got all the ornaments and, you know, the, the tree and the cookies and the milk and everything else. Um,. It's just textures, the meshes, the materials. There's no damn Santa Claus. Because it's Christmas time with no Santa Claus. And my biggest complete gripe about the Polygon Pirates, there's so many cool things in here. You could build, you know, awesome buildings and, I mean, it's it's cool. It's all these great building pieces to, to make all kind of stuff in here. Um, yeah, I mean, awesome. Love it. Um, and that's cool. You can create your own fortresses and whatever that fit that. There's a mansion you can set up. There's downward spiraling stairs on rickety poles and buildings and yeah, awesome stuff. Here's your rickety tower you can set up there in your map. Um, environmental stuff. You got trees. You can set up your own tree cover or vines or here's your water. And it's animated water, so it's awesome, right? Cool. Um, trees that are complete that you can set up as your foliage and populate that all around the map. Rocks and you know, distant skyline textures you can put in here so it kind of gives you something off in the distance instead of just looking at a blank white sky. Um, items. Holy crap, you got... There's a bomb, a chalice, there's coins, there's gems, there's skulls with candles sticking out of them, and, and spyglasses, and props, and there, there's so many really cool things. You can set up a treasure chest with different kinds of treasure in it. You know, 
that's awesome. Here's your chimney you can put on a building. Uh, another kind of chimney. You got um, props for setting up around your your environment. These are all wonderful, cool things. You want a ladder? There you go. There's your ladder. Um, sand, you know, prop sandbags. There you go. You want a raft? Awesome. You want some ships? Oh, okay. Yeah, the ships are awesome. Again, really, really cool asset pack. You've got different hull types you can select from. You got these, and then you got the um, the medium hulls, so they're a little bit smaller. And then you got the sails and everything to go on there as well. So you you can attach your sails and the the mast either up or down, different riggings. Want some lifeboats? Okay, no problem. You got boats. You want bigger ships? There you go. You got this. Oh, let's not stack it on top of something else. You got a warship there. That's awesome. What about? Well, it looks pretty much about the same thing there, but the pirate version of it. There you go. Awesome. You got all the sails and rigging and mast and everything for that. Barrels, extra cannons. You want cannons? No problem. Um, you want skeletons to go on there, or you want a wrecked version of the ship um, that's in multiple pieces, or skeletons hanging out on the ground, chained to a wall, or in a cage, or chilling, leaning on a um, a prop, or just laying down dead. You know what skeletons do, right? Um, cannons. You want cannons? You got cannons. And yes, I've actually rigged these cannons up and made them shoot. You got four different kind of cannons to set up in your ships or set up in your forts or whatever else. Um, I said so many really cool things you can put into your maps. But there's one thing that just torques my nuts. Characters. You got plenty of characters. In creatures, you got your shark, and you got your fish, and your people. You got all these different characters to work with. But there's no freaking parrot. Where the hell's the parrot? I mean, seriously. How are you going to create a pirate game and not give us a damn parrot? Come on, Cinti Studios. Got to be a pain in the butt here and complain about something. So if that's all I got to complain about on this asset pack, then good on you. But give us a damn parrot. Come on, man. Make an update for it. Give us a parrot. Yeah, another thing to look into is to, on a side project that's going on, is to actually go ahead and make these damn ships work. That should be interesting. Because you can imagine being on this ship here, and when you do it, what I found with the Cinti Studio stuff, if you go zero, 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 zero it out, once you place it into a map, and then you grab your mast, put it in here, and it's not always the case, but zero, 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 and of course it's not going to be the case on this one. Um, with some of the assets that I've seen where they're in multiple pieces, you can actually do that. Run zero, zero, zero on your location, and it automatically assigns them into the correct location. Not the case on this one. That would have been quite lovely because it makes lining up all of these fiddly pieces like for a pirate ship. We, can, we could have just put it at zero, zero, zero and then grab the correct rigging for the pirate ship and if we were to grab that and go to zero, zero, zero it's not in the right location and drag it up and we could try it there. So we'd have to throw in the rest of the rigging to see if it actually works. 
and it's in the name for which ones or for the pirate. So like this, let's go to zero zero zero, and we know zero is not going to be the correct height, so let's raise it up. And to me, it doesn't look like it's lining up correctly. So another thing for you guys to look at for updating is setting it up to where everything is based off that zero. Because that just doesn't line up correctly. You have to kind of figure it out as you go along of where they're going to go. Because if I put that in zero, it's definitely not in the right place. I've got to bring it up, move it around, and try to get it right. Because then you got sales to deal with. So I put that one at zero, zero, and zero. Mm, not right. Or is that for this one? Yeah, we're going to try it off of that one. And so setting it up, you're going to have to do some trial by error. And if it was set up correctly to run off the 000 access, we could easily put it all together here and then copy it into our, our map or position it however we need to. Once we get it all lined up and all the sails, and that's just the sails, we'll then have to come in here and then put the wheel on. Um, and that's not in the same folder. It's actually in the props folder. Pick out a captain's wheel. we got three to choose from. Grab that one and then figure out where it goes. Line it up. It's probably not right. No, it's not. And then once you line up that, then you have to figure out, well, look, this and this, they're not on their bases. So there are bases here that you can line them up with. But that puts our sails out of whack now. So yeah, it's just one of those things you're going to have to spend some time if you want to set up these ships. And it would have been a lot easier if you did everything based off 0, 0, 0. Yeah, um, I don't remember. Um, look at the sedan and go to the mesh and hit that. Actually, that should have done it, but it didn't. Now I gotta find where the hell the damn mesh was again. Sedan mesh. Put that back in there, and then no, it was there. Um, no. Um, why is my control Z not working? Oh, because it's just being a total douche knuckle. Yeah, I'm just going to do this, close it down, and no, I'm not going to save anything. Um, yeah, this is we're to the point where Unreal Engine 4 is going to do weird shit. It's not going to let me go back and do stuff. So I'm just going to kill it off and say to hell with it. All right, so I want to thank everybody for watching. I'm going to call it quits on this video. It's a little bit longer than I wanted to do. I was just going to do the 30 minutes for the, um, the, the comparison between the two asset packs. And... As usual, I get carried away. So, thank you guys for watching. I'll be available on Discord for a little bit, and I'll be kind of goofing around. Thanks for watching.